All right, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about the idea of blessing. And, uh, and I can sum it all up very shortly, and we can all go to brunch. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this is what I think it all comes down to, that there's only one blessing, and that blessing is God's love, and it's given fully and freely to all of us all the time. Because God, the infinite mind, knows only to give of itself. And since we are extensions of God consciousness, we are emanations of God, then God just is constantly blessing all of us all the time. Sounds great, doesn't it? So what's the problem? What's the problem? The problem is I don't get it. The problem is I'm not receiving it. The problem is I don't believe it. The problem is sometimes I'm not open to it. You know, and so what I have to do, what I recognize is I have to change my thinking from the thinking of the world that I live in. And the thinking of the world basically says you're bad, wrong, and awful. You're a sinner and all that kind of stuff, which is not what we subscribe to in the science of mind at all. But we'll get to that. And what I have to do is say, okay, if God made me, God doesn't make any junk. And it's the nature of God to give of God's self to each of us. So you have uh, heard the notion uh, of uh, people being, uh, I don't even like the word, but people being uh, sinners. Now, first let me say, Jesus never calls anybody a sinner in the Bible, okay? I have looked, it's not there. Now, he does say, go and sin no more, which I think, first of all, if sin um, means you've missed the mark, right? It's actually an, it's an old archery term. That when, a, when an arrow would slide through the dirt and not hit the target, it made this kind of sound like tsoo, right? And, and they just said, well, sinned. You missed the mark. You missed the target. So the story that I really like about this is the story of the woman who was taken in adultery. And they are getting ready to stone her because that was a stonable offense, right? And so Jesus is there, and Jesus, you know, bends down, and he draws a line in the sand, and he writes some word, and, uh, and he says, let he who is among you without sin cast the first stone. And the crowd disperses, like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. You know that one? That one? Like, oh, yeah. And so uh, he says to the woman, he says, so where are your accusers now? And she says, they're not here. And he says, neither do I condemn you. So go and sin no more. In other words, he recognizes this is a teachable moment, okay? You've missed the mark. You were off track. You did not hit the target here. But you are not a sinner. You are an original blessing, right? So this whole notion that we come in in sin, I completely disagree with that. I think that's nonsense. I think that notion was created to hold people back, to hold them down, to keep them small. I mean, imagine if from the time we were born, we believed that we were an original blessing, that we came here, our energy, our spirit, our soul incarnated so that we could be a blessing into the world that we live in. Wow, I, now I think that's a concept that, that I could get behind, right? You know, to not embrace who you are as a unique, precious, valuable child of God is simply an error. You've missed the mark. If you believe or have believed up until now something else about yourself, well, this is the teachable moment, I hope, that right now you will choose something different. See, it can be corrected right now, no matter how long you have believed in an error. An error anywhere in your life. It, this is one of the extraordinary things about our teaching, I think. You can have believed in sickness for decades, but in a moment, you can change your thinking about that. You can have believed in lack for decades, but in a moment, you can change your thinking about that. You can believe, I am bad, I'm not much, I'm a sinner. You can have believed that for as long as you can have believed that, but in a moment, it can change, and you can say, but wait. Wait, that's not the truth that God created. God created each of us as emanations of love. That is who and what we are as spiritual beings. We are emanations of love. So to believe that you are not enough, to believe that you're not good enough, to believe that you are somehow defective is to blaspheme God, right? God made you. So to believe that there's more God someplace else, I think also blasphemes God. Now, it's only here in a church like this that you will hear me quote Janis Joplin, okay? <laughs> now, before I do this, let's let me say, to save a lot of time and a lot of email later, I'm not encouraging anybody to do anything Janis Joplin did, okay? There, I've said it. I'm not saying go be like Janis Joplin, right? But Janis Joplin did say this, and I think it's great. She said, don't compromise yourself. 
You're all you've got, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it is um, something that I've seen that we do again and again that people compromise themselves. But, and it's a compromise to say you're not much, or you're not worthwhile, or you're not lovable, or you're not capable. The idea of sin is it's just an error. It's a mistake. And an error can always be corrected. You know? so the, but the idea of sin, sin, I don't like that, because sin calls for punishment. But an error calls for correction. So I much prefer to say, you know, that was an error on my part. We can be mistaken. You know, we can use the power of our mind against ourselves, and I certainly have. I don't know about you. But, you know, mistakes, the point of a mistake is to recognize it so there can be correction. That's all it's called for. You know, I think um, when Jesus talked about sin, he was referring to the very common human tendency to perceive without love. You know, it's an old idea of sin. If you did something bad, therefore you are bad. Well, you know, consciousness has evolved over the centuries, you know, and so when you make a mistake, okay, we get to recognize that because we all make mistakes. You know, on the human level, we're not perfect. We believe in the perfection of the divinity that's within us, but the human part of us has a little bit of catching up to do. You know, now if, if, if you were totally perfect in every dimension, there would be no need for you to be here. You would not have been born. So if you think you're your error. If you think you're the mistakes that you've been through, you're never going to grow beyond that, right? You and everyone just keep affirming it in place. You know, oh, I've made such mistakes. I've made such bad choices. I've done some things that were so wrong. You think that about yourself, you've got agreement, you know, because the universe just agrees with us, right? The, the universal subjective mind that we are immersed in just says, well, interesting choice. If that's what you want to believe about yourself, I guess we'll set about producing more of that for you. So this is, this is not to deny that, that we make mistakes. Of course we do. We all do. But accepting our mistakes is how we grow and learn. You know, it says in A Course in Miracles, all things are lessons God would have me learn. So that means that what shows up and who shows up in my life are not by accident. So everything that calls up uh, what I will call today an unenlightened response, you know what I mean? Everything that happens in our life, whether it's people or situations, and our response is not our most enlightened response, there's, um, that's supposed to happen. Because that's how growth operates, right? You see, the, the not best within us comes up for review, for us to have a chance to begin again, for us to choose in a different way. See, because if you say, I'm going to be loving today, I want to be a blessing wherever I go, whoever I meet, then anything that stands between you in being that presence of a blessing, anything that stands between you and that has to come up. I'm sorry, I know, that is the bad news. Right? But the whole point is that it's coming up to be healed and released not to be wallowed in, right? Um, if, if we try to live our life trying to be perfect for everyone so they will love us, then, you know, um, I wonder about that and I think, how are we going to grow? You know, we have to be free to make mistakes so we can grow, so we can learn. That's, that's why we're in earth school, I think. You know, and, say, and, and we say, well, you know, I don't want to be judgmental, but there's a difference between... Um, Observing and having a description and judgment, you know? Um, so how does this fit into our lives? Well, we all have lots of relationships with lots of people, and some of those relationships are really significant. They're really the, we think of them as the key relationships in our life. And we have to know that God, that spirit in its infinite intelligence has brought us together for some learning. And yes, in that learning, mistakes will be made. You know, things will come up for healing, but hopefully we have an agreement that nobody's going to leave uh, the room <laughs> when things come up for healing. So um, I think I mentioned uh, the last time I spoke that uh, my mother has entered a new room in consciousness, and she has uh, gone into assisted living. So I went back east to be a part of a process that I would not really wish on anybody emptying her house of over 50 years. And, um, and so I was doing this with my brother and sister. 
and we have not spent this much time together since I think I was about 10 years old. So that was very interesting. That was really, really interesting because it wasn't just about us being together and enjoying each other's presence and catching up and all that stuff. We were all together and now in the last 40 years we've all gone our own ways and lived our lives, more than 40 years. And, um, and so we all brought different stuff to the party, you know what I mean? We all brought our own personality and our own tendency and our own way to deal with things. And so um, my brother is, uh, he's the boots on the ground because he lives uh, close to where my mother is. And so my sister was wanting to offer certain suggestions of how things might be done. And um, at some point I pulled her aside and I said, you know, before I came here, I prayed and meditated a lot, like twice as much as I normally do, because I knew this would be a challenging thing. I said, I want to suggest to you that you and I have a secret little mantra for this experience. And she said, what's that? And I said, surrender. <laughs> the word is surrender. You know, in Buddhism, they talk about how we suffer because we have attachment. And so I wore this little uh, bracelet I have, uh, I'm not wearing it today, uh, as a symbol to remind me not to be so attached. And you know how it is, you think you're not attached, and then, oh my God, I am so attached. I was attached to like everything. I was attached to bags of junk I'd never seen before. How could that be? How could that be? It was just, it was just an extraordinary, extraordinary thing. And I said, and I got to practice what I, I really got to practice what I teach you. So, you know, just do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. And I'd haul another bag out to the dumpster and hoist it into the dumpster. And with every bag, you know, I had this sensation of this is, this was my mother's life, you know. And so I know many of you have done this. Many of you have had, many of you will have yet to do it. I recommend that when it comes time to do it, you do it from the most centered, loving, blessing place you can be. So I think, for me, how I was able to not be in a heap at the end of each day was that I would surrender and surrender and surrender again. You know, that um, this is just what needs to be done. And it was also helpful for me to know that somehow, even though my mother was not physically here in the emptying out of her home, that this was serving the evolution of her soul. That what we were doing was helping her so that her soul could continue its journey in whatever way that is to be. But boy, when we have relationships with people, and some of those relationships are really significant relationships, that would be my brother and sister in this case, um, Spirit has brought us together for this experience, for this learning, and mistakes will be made. <laughs> Things will come up for healing and release, and we will stay together until we make progress. Whew. Wow, that's, that is, that's really tough. That's a really, really hard thing to do. So I would just say a million times a day, I surrender. I surrender. I'm here to be of service. I surrender. I'm here to be of service. I surrender. And my brother would have some plan, which was not necessarily what I thought was a good idea. And I would literally have to say, be humble. Shut up. Do what he wants. Surrender. And I'd say, OK, great idea. Let's do that. If that's what you think we should do, we'll do that. I think it's a bad idea. But no, we're going to do that, you know? So I just have to. Um, continue with that process, and we pretty much got the whole house almost all emptied out, which I thought was just extraordinary. And I got to tell you, I, I never in my life thought that this would be an experience I would be having, probably because I never let myself think about it, if I tell the truth. Because it's not something you want to think about, and yet I realized this really is uh, being of service to my mother's spiritual growth and evolution. This is supporting her in her journey, and, and that is actually a privilege to do, to be there for her in this capacity. So here is a spiritual truth. 
We do not know what anybody else's lesson is on earth. We don't know what their spiritual lessons are. We don't know what curriculum they came here to accomplish. You know, and, and it would be so tempting and, you know, and so fun to say, well, you know, I think they're here for this. And I think, no, 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 wrong. You know, what is my lesson in this experience? What am I here to learn? Well, you've certainly heard me say over the years that I have not been the most patient person in the world. And this was an extraordinary exercise in patience. I got to tell you, it really, really was. And, and yes, again, also in not being attached. Because there were things that I wanted to bring home with me. The truth is, I have plenty of things. I really do. It's not like I've been waiting for my whole life to, to get some stuff at this point. I have stuff. So it's a, you know, I don't need to ship furniture or do things like that. Even though there was enormous sentimental value, I thought, I think what would really serve my mother, my father who's passed on, is for their things to go and bless somebody else. You know? So one of the last things I did, my father was, of course, a veteran. And one of the last things I did was I gave my brother the number of the Vietnam veterans. <laughs> and I said, all right, I'm just going to give you this, and I surrender. I know you'll do with it whatever you want. But I'm, giving, I'm putting this number in your hand and saying, if you get to a point where you don't know what else to do, call the Vietnam veterans. They will come and pick up the rest of this stuff because dad would love to know that his furniture went to help other veterans. And you know, this was, a, and my brother got it. He, liked, he went, oh, yeah, that's right. That would be great. Dad would really like that, wouldn't he? And I was like, oh. See, now, if I hadn't surrendered all week long, I don't think that moment would have been possible. I don't think he could have heard anything I said. But because I did not force my will through any of this experience, um, actually, it was, it was you know, as difficult as it was, remembering we were being of service, it was, it was nice to be together. It was really nice to be together. Now, I would have preferred we were being together and, I don't know, decorating a Christmas tree or something like that. But this is what it was. This is what you know, spirit had, in its own way, been preparing us for. You know, the master teacher Jesus did not look at people and say, wow, what a mess you've made of things. There's nothing I can do for you. See, I believe, I believe that people everywhere, 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 and I have to believe this, I believe that people are basically good. There is goodness in all people, even people who behave the worst. I believe people are basically good. I believe people can change if they are motivated to change. I know that I have to. You know? So yes, our essence is, is a constant, that you are a spiritual being. You are pure consciousness. You are pure love. That's your essence. Right? That's a constant. But we're all growing through things. And so what I realize is that as we're growing through things, one thing that really makes a difference is to recognize that even in this, I am blessed, and it is mine to give blessing back out to the world. We are always blessed. Even on the worst day of our life, we are still blessed. Isn't that an extraordinary thing to think about? When it feels like everything is going down the drain, we are still blessed. And because we have received and are always in the process of receiving blessing, I believe that it's ours to give that blessing, whether it's an energy of our love or a word of kindness or a gesture or just our attitude, it's ours to give that back out into the world. So we see somebody cross the street, it's ours to bless them. And you know, to bless means to confer. One of the definitions I've read of blessing was to confer prosperity upon. So I thought, well, that's really good. You know, but I don't think it's just a prosperity of worldly riches. I think it's a prosperity of love and health and peace and everything. So when we see people say, you know, God bless you, I bless you, I know the universe blesses you, because I think that's a really powerful thing to put out there. Because, you know, I think most people are walking around the face of the earth not seeing themselves as being very blessed. And yet here we are. We live in probably the richest country in the world. And even on our worst day, I think we got a lot going on. We got a lot going on for ourselves that's very, very good. So, you know, on our spiritual journey, as stuff comes up, we see it. We ask that presence that's within us to help us see it correctly, to help us correct our part in the equation. You know, um, it's, you know it's sort of like 
it's sort of like the concept of amends, which I think is very, very powerful. When you get the importance of amends, you know, the importance of an apology, then you begin to understand forgiveness, right? And you also understand what, what confession, this notion of confession, was originally. You know, Old Testament thinking is, um, I don't want God to see my imperfection. This is like Adam and Eve hiding in the garden, you know? Uh, but we want to bring those things to God for healing and transformation, whatever those things are. You know, nothing is too big for us to bring to God to work with. And by the same token, nothing is too small for us to bring it to God to work with. So I think amends are an extremely important spiritual tool for us, you know, because it's saying, I see it and I'm sorry. I see it and I'm sorry. I'm not asking you to do anything, right? This is so powerful. We're afraid of it, I think, because we feel like we've been caught in something sometimes, you know? And, but I mean, this is part of it. We all miss the target. We all make mistakes. We all make errors, right? So all these things come up because we're in a period now, it seems to me, we are, in a, we are living in a time right now of huge growth, right? And so the spiritual life is constantly in a process of adjusting. The spiritual life is constantly in a process of correcting. So finding God, I think, is finding the place in us where only love is given and only love comes back to us, right? Because what is God? God is the highest and best in all of us. God is the love, the love and intelligence that's, that's within us. And sometimes what that sounds like uh, to me is, God, help me. I've got to see this differently. Uh, God, help me be better in this situation. God, help me be some of the best in me, not the way I have been being up until now. See, I, you know, it's, it's funny to me that people often want to avoid going through things, and yet, if you look at the close relationships in your life, the relationships probably where you feel the closest to people is where you've gone through significant things. That going through something significant with someone, wh whether it's family members or friends or your partner or your spouse, going through things with someone brings us closer together. I just think that's, I think that's really amazing because so often we would prefer to not go through those difficult things. Um, but you know, it's like they say, bones become stronger at the places where they've been broken. You know, if nobody has done anything to anger you, uh, then forgiving them is really not a very powerful uh, uh, moment, right? But to love people when their stuff is up, that's the context we want to create. See, because I think in that context, people get healed and the world gets healed. So my personal commitment with people is, all right, I want to love them even if they are not showing up as their best. Just like I want you to love me even when I'm not showing up as my best, right? That we, we come together as a community to be grown, but also stretched, you know, to hold each other in high regard, to hold each other in love and light and blessing, right? So what we teach is that you only get what you give, right? We all understand that. And so you don't have to be afraid. The truth will never work against us. You know, so if you're judging a person, this is what I realized. I was at an event recently, and, um, and somebody at the table said something just a little snarky to me, you know? It was just a little snark. It wasn't like big snark. It was just a little snark. <laughs> and... And it would have actually been better if it was a big snark, because if it was a big snark, I would have like, immediately said, oh, I need to be loving here. Let it go. Let it go. Bless them. They're in pain. Blah, blah, blah. Right? But, but since it was just a little snark, I got hooked, honestly. I did. It was just a little snark, and, and, and I got hooked. Um, and so you know what I realized is, uh, so then I'm judging, right? Judgy, 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 judgy. Just this, this a little, not big judgy, just this little river of judgment, right? And, um, and you know, I come to, re I, I realized out of this that if you're judging a person, you're wrong even if you're right. And that's what I learned about myself out of the experience. That that person, snark, was for my growth. That it really was. That, that the whole reason Spirit orchestrated that experience so I could see that if I'm judging a person, even if their behavior, even if what they said is completely wrong, if you're judging a person, you're wrong, even if you're right. There I was. 
to think about all the people that I enjoyed doing that with. <laughs> And I just have to say, God help me. <laughs> God help me. God help me. I want to be different. I want to see this differently. I want to be a different person. So again, what I want to say is the only blessing is God's love. And God's love is given freely and fully to all of us all the time. It's ours to receive it. And just as we receive it, it's ours to give it back out to the rest of the world. Let's pray. Thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to remember that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite spirit, God's love, God's light. It's the truth about each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I also know we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so I speak this word for us today that we are blessed. Yes, that God's love is given fully and freely to all of us, and we open up to it, we accept it, we receive it. We live and we move and we have our being in the blessings of God. And yes, absolutely, it is ours to give blessing back out to the world in which we live. So we accept people for who they are, where they are on their path, and we let go of what does not serve us. Those judgments and little thoughts that seem to creep in, we're never more because of that. So we just surrender all of that as we surrender everything that does not serve our spiritual journey. We surrender all of it and allow God to be God more fully by means of us. So we include in our prayer today our friends and family members, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear. And as we see them in our mind's eye, we know that they are loved infinitely by the presence of God within them that they are blessed too, that they are surrounded and uplifted in every good and perfect way. We let a prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So thinking of all those things that are going on in the world today, we let the energy of our prayer be a blessing energy into all of those situations. We declare our prayer as an energy of love and healing and peace and restoration and goodwill, touching all people on the face of the earth. We bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together, that there is a raising up in consciousness here for each and every one of us. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth right now. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.